On the Senate floor Wednesday, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell continued to rail against Democratic policies for high costs. Blaming the left for inflation has been central to McConnell's recent speeches on the Senate floor. When it comes to inflation, McConnell warned, quote, I think things are going to get a whole lot darker and a lot more bleak before they get a lot better. Last week, the most recent CPI report revealed U.S. annual inflation stands at 8.3 percent. Mr. President, Republican leader. I ask consent that further proceedings on the quorum call be dispensed with. Without objection. On Sunday's edition of 60 Minutes, President Biden made a bizarre attempt to deny the American people's pain from Democrats' runaway inflation. After the latest nationwide data reported that consumer prices are rising at 8.3 percent year on year, the president suggested the country should be celebrating that they weren't rising even faster. Working Americans aren't buying that insulting spin. Middle class families aren't rejoicing that daily life cost 8.3 percent more than it did a year ago. And listen to this, 13.2 percent more than when President Biden took office. In Parma, Ohio, one local grocer is working hard to keep her prices competitive, but admits, quote, we've been getting hit with all of our suppliers with chicken, ground meat, everything. And in Fairfield County, the head of one organization that helps feed folks experiencing economic hardship put it this way, I think things are going to get a whole lot darker and a lot more bleak before they get a lot better. We're desperately worried about food. Across the border in West Virginia and Fayette County, persistent high prices have one retired grandmother worried about how the rest of her family is making ends meet. She said, I'm already stressed and stressed and trying to figure out how my daughter is going to pay to keep the lights on, get groceries, get school clothes, or her kids back. In Periopolis, Pennsylvania, one shopper told a reporter that besides cutting back at the grocery store, she had taken on a second job, working nights at a warehouse to help feed her family of four. This is what she had to say. Clothing, gas, just about everything has gone up, and food is a large part of it. Meanwhile, the head of a small manufacturer in Big Bend, Wisconsin, reports that amid price hikes, stacked up supply chains, quote, trying to source products has been very difficult. In each of these states' cases, West Virginia, Ohio, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, one senator tried to square working families, spare working families from all this preventable pain. Each of those states has one Republican senator who warned about inflation, who voted against inflation, and who voted for amendments that would have reduced inflation. But unfortunately, each one of those states also had a Democratic senator who decided to vote in a partisan lockstep to plow ahead with the trillions of dollars in reckless inflationary spending. One senator each from West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin cast the tie-breaking votes to bring this pain down on their citizens' heads. And now, sadly, they're all paying the price. Working families in West Virginia are paying Washington Democrats' inflation tax to the tune of an extra $563 a month. Ohioans are paying $666 more. In Pennsylvania, inflation is squeezing folks for an extra $605 million, $605. And in Wisconsin, it's $673. Families in these states are paying a painful price for the deciding vote that their Democratic senators chose to cast. Now, on a related matter, Democrats' runaway inflation includes skyrocketing costs to keep the lights on and to heat or cool homes. We're also witnessing the dangerous vulnerabilities that Democrats in places like California have built into their electrical grids. California Democrats have spent years <coughs> putting green lifestyle preferences ahead of the basic needs of working families. Yeah. <laughs>
<coughs> the result is a grid that's both more expensive and less reliable. We've seen the same California Democrats who spent years pushing their citizens to buy expensive electric cars <coughs> now begging the public not to plug them in. And even as California teeters on the brink of an energy crisis of European proportions, Washington Democrats are pushing the rest of the country in the very same risky direction. They made their signature priority for this year spending even more of the people's money to take us even farther in the wrong direction, even faster. Last month, our Democratic colleagues ran through a gigantic party line bill that raises taxes on reliable domestic American energy in order to subsidize wealthy people buying electric cars or fancy new appliances. Every Democratic senator cast a deciding vote for that reckless spending spree. That includes the senior senator for West Virginia, who claims he only did so because the Democratic leader promised him that Democrats would line up behind permitting reform to make it easier to build things and complete projects in our country. But now, very predictably, this backroom deal is crumbling before our eyes. Almost 60 days after our colleague from West Virginia gave up his vote for this vague promise, it still appears that far left and House Democrats want no part of this backroom deal that they didn't sign on to. As for the Republican side, our colleague, Senator Capito, has put forward a real, actual, substantive permitting reform bill that would make the common sense changes our country needs. Senator Capito's substitute bill stands in stark contrast to what every indication thus far suggests will be weak, reform, and name-only legislation from her home state colleague. As luck would have it, Senator Capito's real plan is also closer to passing the Senate than Senator Manchin's reform and name-only plan. Senator Manchin's recently told reporters that his version may need 20 Republican votes to become law, but Senator Capito's plan only needs Senator Manchin and nine other Democrats to get on board. We're talking about real, substantive reform that is already closer to becoming law. But so far, our Democratic colleague from West Virginia has refused to back his colleague's common sense proposal. He's shown little appetite to actually get something accomplished. So, Mr. President, talk is cheap. If our colleague across the aisle wants real permitting reform, Senator Capito's fantastic bill only needs Senator Manchin plus nine more Democrats to clear this chamber. Otherwise, it would appear the senior senator from West Virginia traded his vote on a massive liberal boondockle in exchange for nothing. Now, one final matter. Finally, with all these national crises hammering families, the Democratic majority is using the Senate schedule to demonstrate that they do not care. The Democratic leader is not spending floor time on a bill to combat Democrats' inflation crisis or their immigration crisis or their violent crime crisis or their energy crisis. Not on legislation to help American families' daily lives in any way. Instead, the Democratic leader set up a vote to erode the First Amendment and make political speech more difficult. Instead of trying to address the root causes of their unpopularity, Democrats are attacking the American people's ability to speak out against them. The Democrats try to ram through their political takeover bills like this Zombie Disclose Act once or twice every year. This legislation would give Democratic friends and the unelected bureaucracy even more power to police political speech and activism of private citizens. Remember, donations to political action committees and electioneering nonprofits are already publicly disclosed. That's already the law. What Democrats want is a huge new step that would reduce private citizens' privacy and chill America's constitutional rights. The same Democrats who wouldn't condemn angry mobs gathering outside the private family homes of federal judges now believe that a vastly more, that vastly more information about private citizens' political views should be made public. It's no mystery how these things fit together. 
Even the liberal ACLU warned years ago that what the Democrats want to pull off, quote, unconstitutionally infringes on freedom of speech and the right to associational privacy. I don't often say the ACLU has it right, but they do here. Instead of addressing the reasons why Americans are upset with Democrats, Democrats are trying to legislate our citizens into sitting down and shutting up.